Hello everyone. Welcome to AVLSI lecture number 14 point N. N stands for numerical. So today we are going to uh, discuss on the numerical on source follower. And uh, yeah, let's begin with question number one. So suppose the circuit shown in figure number 14.3 is designed to shift the voltage level by one volt. Now, what do you mean by this statement uh, to shift the DC, uh, designed to shift the voltage level by one volt? It means that the difference between the V in and V out is one volt. So over here we can write V in minus V out is equal to one volt. Okay. So that is the meaning of statement uh, designed to shift the voltage level by one volt. So for the part A, we have to calculate the dimensions of M1 and M2. So here is my M1 and M2 transistor. And uh, we have to calculate the dimensions that is W by L ratios of both M1 and M2. If ID1 is equal to ID2 is equal to 0.5 milliamperes, VGS2 minus VGS1 is equal to 0.5 volt and lambda is equal to gamma is equal to zero. Okay. And then we have to repeat part A if gamma is given and V in is given as 2.5 volt. Fine. We have been given additionally NMOS parameters such as VTH, lambda, mu and C ox, and 2 phi f. So these parameters and most parameters are valid for both M1 and M2 transistors. Now let us first try to identify which amplifier it is. Okay. So your input is applied to the gate terminal. Output is taken from the source terminal. So basically it's a source follower and uh, your M2 transistor is acting as a NMOS current source load. Okay. So we have a current source load here with the source follower amplifier. Fine. So let us continue and start with our uh, solution. So for first part, let us rewrite what is given to us. Lambda is zero, gamma is zero. V in minus V out is one volt. ID1, ID2 is 0.5 milliamperes. VGS2 minus VGS1 is 0.5 volt. Correct. Now we know that the both the transistors should be in saturation. So the current ID1 flowing through M1 will be given by half mu and C ox W by L of one VGS1 minus VTH. VTH is same for both the transistors, the whole square. So we'll equate this to equal to 0.5 milliamperes. And uh, what do we know about VGS1 from the diagram? If you look carefully, VGS1, VG1 voltage is V in and S1 voltage is V out. Okay, VS1 voltage is V out. So what is VGS1? VGS1 is nothing but V in minus V out. And what is V in minus V out given to us? One volt. That means VGS1 value is given as one volt. Fine. So if you rearrange this formula and we write it as W by L of one will be equal to twice ID1 divided by mu and C ox into Instead of VGS1, we'll write V in minus V out minus VTH the whole square. Now from here, all the values are available to us. ID1 is value is available. Mu and C ox is available. V in minus V out is one volt and VTH is uh, 0.7, right? So you solve it by plugging these values in the calculator and you should definitely get W by L of one as a fraction, which is 82.78, right? So you can write it approximately equal to 83 is to one. So that's the uh, sizing of transistor M1. Similarly, we have to do it for uh, M2. So again, M2 transistor also remains in saturation. So ID2 will be half mu and C ox W by L of two into VGS2 minus VTH the whole square. That is also again equal to 0.5 milliamperes. Now we have been given the data that VGS2 minus VGS1 should be 0.5. And uh, so VGS2 will be 0.5 plus VGS1 and VGS1 from the earlier analysis, we got it as one volt. So your VGS2 will be 0.5 plus one, which is 1.5 volts. Okay. So again, we can uh, rewrite the formula W by L of two will be equal to twice ID2 divided by mu and C ox into VGS2 minus VTH the whole square. And uh, here the ID2 value is 0.5 milliamperes. Mu and C ox value is given to us. VGS2 is 1.5. VTH is 0.7, right? So plug in the values in the calculator and uh, you should get the value positively. Your uh, W by L of two as 11.64, which you can approximate equal to 12 is to one. Okay. So your sizing of M1 transistor is 83 is to one and the sizing of M2 transistor is 12 is to one. And this completes part one or part A. 
okay so let me revise what we have done so we have been given some data and we have identified that the circuit given is a source follower with a nmos current source load and uh, your data given is v in minus v out id1 vgs2 minus vgs1 from here we determine uh, vgs1 right that was equal to 1 you plug in into formula and calculate the w by l of 1 again in the second case we found out the value of vgs2 plug in into formula and found out the value of w by l of 2 which was equal to 12 is to 1 fine now let us check out the part number b so again we have to calculate the dimensions of L m1 and m2 for gamma equal to 0.45 okay so the gamma value is given and we know that out of m1 and m2 m1 transistor is suffering from body effect right whereas m2 transistor doesn't suffer from body effect so that care you have to take and this you have to do for v equal to 2.5 volt okay so let us begin part 2 of the solution so for part 2 m1 transistor vsb is not equal to 0 so we might have to calculate vth again right we cannot assume the value of vth given to us now gamma is given for the second part v in is given as uh, 2.5 volt v in minus v out is 1 volt id1 and id2 are 0.5 milliamperes vgs2 minus vgs1 is 0.5 volt okay so uh, what will be my v out now if v in is given as 2.5 so V out will be equal to 1.5 volt over here, DC value. And uh, your VGS1 is VG1 minus VS1. So VG1 is actually V in and VS1 is V out. So VGS1 will be V in minus V out, which is equal to 1 volt again. So what will be VGS2? So VGS2 minus VGS1 is 0.5. So VGS2 will be 0.5 plus VGS1. VGS1 we evaluated as 1 volt. So VGS2 will be 1.5 volt. Okay, so now as I've told you, let us calculate the value of VTH1, the threshold voltage for one uh, transistor number one, because that is suffering from body effect. So, what will be the formula? VTH1 will be equal to VTH0 plus gamma times into square root of mod of twice phi f plus VSB1 minus square root of mod of twice phi. F. So, as you can see over here, your VSB1 value is VS1 minus VB1 your uh, vs1 value is nothing but your v out and vb1 is zero so vsb1 value is equal to v out and v out is equal to 1.5 that we calculated so we plug in the values over here v out as 1.5 uh, twice phi f as 0.5 gamma as 0.45 and vth2 as 0.7 so we get the new value of vth1 uh, threshold voltage for transistor 1 m1 it's coming out to be 0 0.97023 volt okay so now you can plug in the values over here. Uh, ID1 formula is given over here, half mu and Cox, W by L of 1, VGS1 minus VTH1, the whole square, which is equal to 0.5 milliamperes. And we already evaluated the value of VGS1, which is coming out to be 1 volt. So plug in the values over here, uh, W by L of 1 will be equal to twice into ID1 divided by mu and Cox into VGS1, VGS1 is V in minus V out minus VTH, the whole square. So now we have all the values with us. We have the updated value of VTH1, which is actually 0.97, right? And uh, yeah, remaining things also we have V in minus V out is one volt. So yes. So we plug in the values over here and uh, we get the value of W by L uh, as 8277.97, right? It's a huge number. So approximated as 8278 is to one. So that's the sizing of your transistor number one. Similarly, we'll approach the transistor sizing for two, W by L of two, uh, which will be twice ID2 into mu and Cox into VGS2 minus VTH2 actually. So VTH2 is nothing but your VTH only 0.7 because it is not suffering from body effect. So, and also VGS2 we can, we have evaluated as 1.5 volt. So we can easily plug in the values VGS2 as 1.5, VTH as 0.7, and the rest, all the values are available to us. So W by L of 2 will be equal to 12 is to 1. Okay. The sizing for the transistor number 2 will be uh, 12 is to 1. Okay. So for the transistor number 1, for the second part, the sizing is uh, the dimensions of M1 are 8278 divided by 1 or is to 1. And W by L of 2 is 12 is to 1. Okay. So I think with this, we have completed the numerical, right? So again, I repeat, for part B, additional data is given, gamma is given, 
and since m1 transistor vsb is not equal to 0 it is suffering from body effect so we have to recalculate the value of vth1 and once we get the value of vth1 we have to plug in in the formula and calculate w by l of 1 uh, whereas w by l of 2 will almost be remaining same because nothing is changed for m2 transistor so it is again coming out to be 12 is to 1 uh, earlier also i guess it is 12 is to 1 yes okay so for a second transistor there is no change but the first transistor uh, the gain uh, i mean the w by l ratio has drastically changed okay so let me uh, just glance through it once more so i will uh, this is part a where we calculated w by l of 1 and uh, w by l of 2 for both the transistors for part b we are considering the body effect for m1 so we recalculated threshold voltage in the form of vth1 and then we calculated w by l of 1 and w by l of 2 okay so with this we conclude this session and uh, next time we'll start with your common gain amplifier integrated circuit amplifier so until then have a good day and thank you